I have been with Healthcare Partners for probably two years, and uh, my experience has been absolutely terrific. When I go to a specialist, my records follow me. There's no need to actually provide any additional information. They know what's happened in my primary care doctor's office. Become a healthcare partner today. Medicare open enrollment starts October 15 and ends December 7. Learn more about how you can become a healthcare partner at hcpnv.com. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by the St. Therese Mission, a future venue for cultural and environmental events near Pahrump. Get involved. Visit us at stthereseemission.com or call 702-507-4172. Tonight on News 46, a two-year-old dies at the hands of another. Several buildings are lost in a structure fire. An Act of Kindness Award is presented to Sayeda Trudeau. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Rhonda Van Winkle and Jason Koblenz. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46. Local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Monday, January 6, 2014. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. And I'm Jason Koblenz for News 46. A two-year-old boy has died after allegedly being beaten by his mother's boyfriend in Decatur, Illinois. The boy, whose name is Dominic Bradley, has family here in Pahrump. The father, who lived in Pahrump for 15 years, called KPVM to tell us about the death of his child, who lived in Decatur with the mother, her boyfriend, and his two sisters. 28-year-old Manuel Gonzalez was arrested and charged with aggravated battery to a child. The Macon County State's attorney says charges are likely to be upgraded. According to a sworn statement from the Decatur Police Department, Gonzalez told police he was caring for Dominic last Monday night when, while playing with Dominic, Gonzalez pushed him off the bed, causing the boy to hit his head on a, tel on a television stand. The police statement says that they observed multiple bruises on Dominic's face and body, some of which Gonzalez admitted to causing. Gonzalez is being held in the Macon County Jail on $750,000 bail. The father, who resided in Pahrump, Kevin Bradley, is attempting to raise funds to help with expenses. If you would like to help, you can contact the bank, which is in Plumas, at 530-832-4405 and ask about the Bring Dominic Justice Fund. Several structures were destroyed on Lefner Street this morning. Fire crews responded to a report of a brush fire that quickly extended to nearby structures. An intoxicated male is reported to have started the blaze caused by a discarded cigarette. For the second time in a week, a multi-structure fire occurred on the north side of town. Pahrump Valley Fire Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies all arrived on scene to a multi-structure fire on Lefner Street right off of Blagg and Simpkins. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were able to get the blaze under control. However, several structures were lost and some of the roofs did cave in on some of the others. The line of outbuildings, which were near the main residence, appears to be some kind of enclosure for animals. However, no animals were inside at the time of the fire. One person was checked out by medics on scene for possible injuries related to the fire. Prompt by Fire and Rescue will be conducting the investigation, which appears to be accidental in nature and possibly caused by the improper extinguishing of a smoking device. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Well, storms across the eastern United States are being described as downright dangerous. This morning's temperatures in the Great Lakes region went from the negative 20s to a real fill of negative 50 when you include the wind chill. This making it very dangerous to go outside. This is not just another winter storm. The bitter cold is being caused by a polar vortex, which acts like a hurricane. The vortex winds are pushing the cold air into many of the north and eastern United States. Temperatures are as cold on the coldest on record in 20 years.
for many areas, breaking records in places like Chicago, where it was minus 16 overnight and minus 14 at noon. Officials are asking everyone to remain indoors. More than 30 states have posted some sort of wind chill warning or advisory today. Morning wind chills were nearly 60 below in parts of northern Minnesota, and that's very cold. At minus 50 degrees, skin can freeze in less than five minutes. Authorities have blamed the deep freeze for 13 deaths so far. The deep freeze has also wreaked havoc for air traffic across the country, with more than 3,500 flights canceled. Later in the broadcast, we'll have your local weather. All I can say is I'm glad I'm in this part of the country. <clears throat> While we continue our conversation in part two with Senator Mark Hutchison, who is campaigning for lieutenant governor of the state of Nevada. Uh, there will be a question on the ballot in November of 2014 uh, as to whether Nevada should impose a 2% uh, uh, tax on any business that has revenues of a million dollars or more. Now this is going to be uh, pitched as something that's going to help education, something that's going to be used to fund education, uh, but the challenge is, is that there's nothing actually in the law itself that would require this money to be used for education. Uh, and even beyond that, this is going to be a complete disaster for the state of Nevada. Uh, this is going to be a jobs killer. It's going to be an economy killer. Uh, we have businesses who have already uh, told us. I've spoken to uh, business owners in both North, uh, North uh, uh, Nevada, uh, Northern Nevada, and Southern Nevada, as well as uh, throughout the rurals, uh, that uh, if, this, uh, if this tax passes, that they're going to leave the state. They're going to take the jobs with them. They're going to take the economic opportunities with them. So this will be an absolute disaster. If this tax passes, Nevada will have the fourth highest corporate income tax in the entire United States. 90% uh, of the businesses in this state would be better off with, from a tax perspective in California. This is going to be an absolute job and economy killer, and we've got to do everything we can to defeat it. Is that something that Nevada kind of uh, uh, advertises ourselves for to businesses, right. is to come here because of the uh, taxes are so low? That's right. And if, and, if, and if the margins tax passes, we will never be, again, a business-friendly or a tax-friendly state. Uh, if the margins tax passes, for example, no matter how disastrous it is, the legislature can't do anything for three years. If the margins tax passes, uh, we will have businesses that will leave the state of Nevada. Uh, they won't be coming here by any, by any stretch. They're going to be leaving the state of Nevada because there are other states that are much more business friendly and much more tax friendly if this tax uh, passes. And so we're going to lose a lot of our advantages that we sell and that we promote the state of Nevada to other businesses coming here from other states. Some of the concerns that uh, you might have had brought up during this men's breakfast today that you might be looking into or, uh, or that you would like to let the viewers know about. Well, I think that uh, the uh, federal government is a real challenge for rural Nevada. Uh, as I go throughout the state, um, I hear over and over again that uh, you know the, the, the challenges aren't coming from Carson City. Uh, there can be some challenges coming from Carson City, but the real challenge is the federal government and the overreaching federal government. You see that through the Affordable Care Act. You see that through the federal lands uh, ownership by the federal government. You see that through environmental uh, um, impositions that it, with just unreasonable positions that the federal government takes. And so I think that the fight for Nevada in many ways is going to be uh, a fight as to whether or not we're going to continue to have our sovereignty as a state and whether or not we're going to be able to push back effectively against this out of control federal government and we're going to be able to protect our constitutional rights. And that's what I've done uh, throughout my history as a constitutional lawyer. That's what I've done uh, in the state Senate. And I want to continue to do that for Nevada. People can find out more about your campaign and get involved. I'm sure that you have yes. your own website. I sure do. Uh, it's uh, www.hutch, the number four, nevada.com. Hutch for the number four, nevada.com. And I'd love to be a resource for any questions or for any issues that uh, anybody here in Nye County or throughout the state uh, may have. Well, after the break, Marty Salt discusses a new tool dentists are using that may help some people who avoid seeing the dentist. We'll be right back. Next on Prescription Health. How lasers are making a trip to the dentist less painful. This portion of the news is brought to you by Albertsons. You're in for something fresh. Welcome back to News 46. Studies show up to 40 million Americans avoid seeing the dentist because of anxiety and fear. But those with dental phobias have a higher risk of gum disease and tooth loss. Now, lasers are making a visit to the dentist a little more bearable, Marty Salt explains. This health tip is brought to you by 
Desert View Hospital, and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. It's a sound that sends chills down your spine. But many dentists are swapping the drill for the laser. They appreciate the fact that there's less pain, less swelling, quicker healing time. This water lace can be used for many dental procedures, including filling cavities, performing root canals, and removing tooth or gum. Small procedures, you know, in a few days, you may not even notice that we, we did anything. Teeth contain water. When the laser makes contact with the tooth, it excites the water molecules to cut through it. The laser keeps the tooth hydrated and prevents heat, which means no pain. Here, the laser is used to cut away a patient's gums. The tissue literally vaporizes with less bleeding, swelling, and damage to the surrounding area. I have um, receding gums. To fix Terry Pesta's problem, her periodontist used a laser to transfer tissue and fill in sparse areas of gum. Terry had the procedure performed without the laser the first time and then with it. I would say this time there was um, absolutely no pain at all. A technology that is changing the way dentists treat patients and the way patients feel about seeing their dentists. I'm Marty Salt reporting. Most dentists do not charge their patients any extra for using the laser. It actually saves them time because they can get through procedures more quickly. And we'll take a turn now. The Supreme Court today put same-sex marriages on hold in Utah, at least while a federal appeals court more fully considers the issue. The court issued a brief order blocking any new same-sex unions in the state. The order grants an emergency appeal by the state following the December 20th ruling by U.S. District Judge Robert Shelby that the state's ban on same-sex marriage violates gay and lesbian couples' constitutional rights. More than 900 gay and lesbian couples have been married since then. The high, court, the high Court order will remain in effect until the December-based 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals decides whether to uphold Shelby's ruling. The 10th Circuit has set short deadlines for both sides to file their written arguments with the state's first brief due on January 27th. No date for argument has been set as of this time. The Stratosphere in Las Vegas is offering Nevada residents a free ride to the top on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays during January. Nevada residents only need to show a valid state identification card at the ticketing office at the base of the tower during regular hours on any Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. The normal cost is $18 for the elevator ride to the observation deck at the top of the tallest structure in the western half of the North American continent. Locals will also be able to use coupons to get reduced prices on the rides and restaurants at the top of the stratosphere. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. I've been up there, and it's an have amazing you? view. I've never been up there in all these years, so I'm going to have to make, make a trip. You should take advantage of that while it's I will. still available for free. I will. Well, we'll have more news after this break. Please stay with us. <laughs> 